This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Ravina and this is Kini News. MACC Chief Commissioner Azambaki said that the anti-graph agency may summon Dime for questioning again. Azam said they received information that there are other assets that Dime has not declared and is verifying the information. The MACC might summon Dime Zainuddin for questioning again. This is as the agency intensifies its probe into the former finance minister. This came after an ongoing investigation led the anti-graph agency to suspect that he might have more assets he had not declared to the authority. MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki said investigators recently received information about the alleged assets of Daim and are now working to establish its veracity. He told Malaysia Kini that the investigators need time as the MACC requires assistance from its counterparts and other relevant agencies overseas. When asked if Daim will be summoned again for questioning following the surface of new information, Azam said that if investigators manage to find more, he expects that they will call him in. While Azam declined to reveal further details, sources close to the investigation suggested that the assets they are looking into include more properties, shares and bank accounts both in Malaysia and overseas. Last week, Daim pleaded not guilty after he was charged at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court for failing to abide by a MACC notice to disclose his assets. The MACC had said that they are also continuing other investigations against the business tycoon over allegations of corruption and money laundering. The court has allowed Muhyiddin's bid for a temporary passport release so that he can go to Bangkok for an eight-day trip until February 23rd. Previously, the prosecution objected to the application as the reason cited by the Pago MP is not urgent, amongst others. The Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court allowed Perkatan National Chairperson Moedin Yassin's application for a temporary return of his passport. This is so that he can fly to Thailand on February 15th. Judge Azura Alwi this morning allowed the bid linked to Moedin's passport, which was impounded pending disposal of the former Prime Minister's money laundering case. On January 31st, Moedin filed the bid for a temporary passport return so he could go to Bangkok and strengthen friendships and goodwill with acquaintances and attend the opening of a restaurant there. Based on the supporting affidavit, Muhyiddin explained that he wished to embark on the eight-day trip until February 23rd because his close Malaysian friend seeks for him to officiate the opening of a new Thai restaurant. However, the prosecution had objected to this application as the reason cited by the Pago MP is not urgent among others. During open court proceedings today, Azura allowed the passport to be temporarily released from today until February 23rd ruling that Moedin is not a flight risk. The judge said despite the Thai trip's reasons not being urgent, the court has wide discretion to allow temporary passport release depending on the circumstances. AMNO says it will continue to seek a full pardon for Najib. According to Zahid, this is to fulfil the wishes of Najib and his family. AMNO's decision to continue seeking a full pardon for Najib Abdul Raza is to fulfil the wishes of the former Prime Minister and his family. This is according to UMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Zaid, however, said efforts to be made regarding the matter would need to take into account respect for the 17th Yandi Pertuan Agong, Sultan Ibrahim Sultan Iskandar. He said it's only right that the efforts be made with full respect towards the king because his majesty has the power as enshrined in the federal constitution. Yesterday, Najib's lead counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, reportedly said that the former prime minister would be submitting a new application for a full royal pardon, adding that the defence team was waiting for the right time to file the petition. On February 2nd, the pardons board reduced Najib's 12-year jail sentence by half, indicating that he is set to be released on August 23, 2028. According to the statement issued by the pardons board secretariat, the fine to be paid by Najib is also cut to only 50 million ringgit from the original 210 million ringgit. Swaram has joined the chorus of condemning the police after several officers were spotted stationed at the Bursa headquarters following a press conference yesterday. Swaram has slammed police presence outside the Bursa headquarters yesterday after the electoral watchdog held a press conference calling for reforms. The Human Rights Group Executive Director Seven Darasami echoed Bursa's remarks in calling the incident an act of intimidation. In a statement today, 
Seven pointed out that there were 10 police officers, two police trucks and a number of police motorcycles stationed outside Bursi's office for a mere press conference. He added that this is not upholding public order, and on the contrary, it is sheer condemnable intimidation. He questioned if this meant that netizens criticizing the pardon board decision will follow suit by having their posts deleted, social media accounts monitored, or even worse, investigated under Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act. He asked whether Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail or Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim were aware of the police monitoring the press conference. He also lamented the targeting of former Damansara MP Tony Pua, who was recently questioned by the police over his remarks on the issue. According to Seven, both incidents showed the government's inability to accept constructive criticism, dissent, or even discontent. Yesterday, Bursi had decried alleged police intimidation after officers were spotted stationed at their headquarters following the press conference. Former MP and Surendran has quit PKR. He said this in response to Fami, who had reminded him to practice party discipline when expressing discontent. Surendran said there is no point in being a member of a party that no longer represents change and reform. Former Padang Surai MP and Surendran has quit PKR. He cited the party's failure to represent change and reform as a reason for his departure. This came following PKR Information Chief Fami Fadzil's response to him on practicing party discipline when expressing discontent. In a post on X, Surendran told Fami, never mind party discipline, as he hasn't been an active party member for a long time anyway. He added that he had asked about the reforms PKR once promised, and there was no decent answer to that. He said there is no point in being a member of a party that no longer represents change and reform, and to take the post as his resignation. Previously, Surendran had openly criticised Pakatan Harapan leaders for being silent on the sedition probe against former Damansara MP Tony Poa. He lamented the shameful silence of Harapan leaders on the probe against Poa under the Sedition Act over Facebook posts criticising the Pardons Board's decision to reduce former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's prison sentence. In response, Fami had said that in PKR and Harapan, they hold on to principles, but at the same time, they also have party discipline. When asked for comments, Fami said Surendran had not been involved or active in the party since the 14th general election and had the right to make such a decision. PKR Information Chief Fami Fazil said it is the right of former Padang Sarai MP and Surendran to leave the party. Fami said the former PKR Vice President had the right to make such a decision since he was no longer active in PKR. He said Surendran has not been involved or active in the party since the 14th general election and it is his decision. He added that perhaps Surendran thinks it's appropriate for him to use another platform and that is his right. He also said that he respected Surendran's decision on the matter. Fami, who is also the communications minister, said this when met after an engagement session with cinema operators in Kuala Lumpur last night. Yesterday, Surendran had announced his exit from PKR due to frustration with the party. His departure came after a call from Fami to practice party discipline when expressing discontent. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Ravina. Thank you for watching.